Hello everyone, if you found this video, you might already work with Autosar already. But there are not many people who work in both Autosar Classic and Autosar Adaptive at the same time. In this video I will show you some basic differences between these two platforms. Let's start with Autosar Classic. Autosar Classic was there for many years and it's still doing well until recently. With Autosar Classic, vehicle network mostly based on CAN and LIN, where every signal and message fixed at configuration time. Basically, all information exchanged in vehicle network are well defined. All must be defined in CAN database or similarly format. But the car are becoming smarter, as you see what happened with smartphone evolutions in last dedicated. Your cell phone are not just for making a phone call or sending message anymore, it can do many things other than that. Same thing are happening for the automotive industry. There are more and more application are being integrated to the car such as connected features, navigation, autonomous driving and so on. For that high-end applications, the old approach with static network signal based is not possible to handle many use cases. Example, let think about your phone now you can easily install or remove some applications you need. So in the mean of information it cannot be statically configured, it need to be dynamically exchanged between ECU. For that reasons we need a new concept in Autosar Adaptive so-called Service Oriented Architecture, SOA. In this new concept the service provider and consumer can be dynamically exchange any information they have in runtime. Some IP protocol is one of solution widely used to implement SOA in Adaptive Autosar. Now we will look deeper into an ECU to see what is main difference. Autosar Classic Operating System is a real-time operating system, RTOS. But as you know there are software running in the vehicle is not RTOS, for example multimedia head unit, usually come with Linux or Android operating system inside. That why now in Autosar Adaptive they aims to cover rest of the things. That what they said, now operating system should be a POSIX OS, which mean Linux, Android, QNX or any POSIX compliant operating system can be used in Adaptive Autosar. The minimum requirement for a POSIX OS here is PES51 profile, where some very basic API for scheduling and real-time requirement are covered. Now OS can handle dynamic scheduling compared to fixed scheduling in Autosar Classic. Classic software component build up from runnable entity and execute by a task. Smallest entity in adaptive platform is processor executable entity. Talking about memory between these two platform we can easily see that main difference here is that. In classic platform the OS can perform operation directly on physical address of memory which is having very limit space, but it now changed an adaptive platform with virtual address and MMU supported. So, it can give to application a lot more memory space and resources. Now we investigate detail between two platforms. At lowest layer 1 you can see the difference. Adaptive platform now can run on virtual machine with hypervisor a container, or a real hardware compared to traditional classic platform where it can only run on real microcontroller hardware. Let's give it an example to give you more insight. In classic platform all tasks are predefined and execute always in system. Task can be in idle state but basically it was there all the time. But an adaptive platform user can request to run a specific applications, or when it not needed, user can request to completely stop and remove all resource allocated for the application. Execution manager can decide which need to be run and which need to be stopped based on many trigger in and out including user request. If you found videos interesting, please subscribe for more videos that we are planning to do mainly on Autosar related topics. Thank you and see you again in next videos.